You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 188 with Gary John Bishop. It's about time for you to un-F yourself. And before we go any further, I want to let you know that this episode has some strong language in it. As you can tell from the title, there are a couple F-bombs. And if you are offended by words, or if you have children around that you don't want to hear this type of language, please feel free to excuse yourself from this particular episode and or have your kids leave the room. But I'm telling you right now, this is an amazing message for you to listen to and take action on. Now, let's get on with the conversation. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former Army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up, what's up, all of you amazing, abundant leaders out there. I am Wally Carmichael, your founder and host of the Men of Abundance podcast. And today we are having a conversation with Gary John Bishop, our second Scottish dude on the show. Totally amazing, but Gary is not in Scotland at the time of this conversation. He is literally just down the street from where I am currently recording this pre-show. You'll find out where that is in just a minute. Nonetheless, we have an amazing conversation. Gary, just like every one of our amazing guests, really brought it in this conversation, and I'm so excited to share this conversation with you. And talking about sharing, you know I have to allow you and afford you the opportunity to be abundant in your life today by paying it forward and sharing this episode, this conversation, and men of abundance in general with everyone you come in contact with, or at least those that you like. And it is so easy for you to do that. Just share Men of Abundance on Facebook. Share the episode menofabundance.com forward slash 188 or share it right from whatever podcast player it is that you're listening to. Click on the three dots, a drop down menu will come down and you can share it on Twitter, Facebook, in an email, text message, whatever you want. Just make sure you're abundant in your life today. Pay it forward and share this with other men and women. Trust me on this. They will thank you for it. And men, I want to personally invite you to come over and join our Men of Abundance community on Facebook. It is a closed community. And all you have to do to request access to the Men of Abundance community is go to menofabundance.com. Click on the members only tab at the top of the page and request access from right there. I will check you out. I will then give you access. No joint accounts. I'm doing everything that I can to make sure that it's only men in there so that we can have the conversations that we need to have and we can continue this conversation conversation over there at the Men of Abundance community. All right, let me introduce you to Gary. He is the author of the book, Unfuck Yourself. It's spelled with an asterisk, but that asterisk is not necessarily there to not fully spell out the word F-U-C-K. The asterisk is there for a specific reason, and you can find out why. We didn't have this conversation during the show, but I knew this from his website. You can find out what the asterisk means by going to GaryJohnBishop.com and check out Gary's The Asterix blog. That's where Gary starts out by breaking down the meaning of the asterisk, what its significance is, and I think you're really going to dig it. It's really going to tie right in perfectly to this conversation that we're having here today. Gary is a highly sought after personal development expert and one of the leading lights in the industry. His passion for impacting people, shifting their thinking, and empowering new and unparalleled success has earned him hundreds of thousands of admirers and followers across the globe. His debut book, Unfuck Yourself, Get Out of Your Head and Into Your Life, is an international bestseller in almost a dozen countries, including the U.S., Canada, U.K., and beyond. His no-nonsense approach, coupled with the dynamic delivery of his ideas, woven masterfully with years of high-impact coaching and development, has given rise to his booming popularity and head-turning ability to unleash the potential of individuals and powerfully influence group culture and performance. Gary has traveled the world leading and implementing highly effective and successful programs with thousands of people, and he has worked closely with executives from some of the world's leading companies and organizations. He is currently working on his second and third books, 
and is available for a very select number of speaking engagements annually. So without further ado, Men of Abundance, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Gary John Bishop. Gary, welcome to Men of Abundance, brother. How are you doing? I'm outstanding, Wally, and thanks for having me. Man, it's my pleasure. I uh, really appreciate you jumping on so quick. Where are you at in the world? Um, I'm in uh, Central Florida. I'm a little bit outside of Orlando, near uh, near Disney World, you know, Mouse Town. Oh, man, I love it. I, I'm a Disney yeah. fanatic. I was just there a couple weeks ago with my family over the holidays. And in fact, my family is there now. My family's. I'm doing split ops right now between Tampa and, and Hawaii. Oh, wow. And, uh, man, I'm telling you what, those flights are killing me. I'm going to be back there again in March. Uh, 12-hour flight, no matter how you dice it up. Yeah, I don't envy you that one. <laughs> That's terrible, man. But nobody feels sorry for me because I'm between Hawaii. Although I talked to my wife this morning, it was 27 degrees this morning in Tampa. What's up with that? I know it's kind of like being back in Scotland here, but uh, you know, well, you know, you got to take the good with the bad, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, we weren't told about that that type of cold weather, but I said we're going to probably end up moving back to Hawaii, but we'll see what happens. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, man. You know, before I get too much into the show, I like to start out with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today, Gary? Um, my children and my wife. You know, like they, I'm grateful that I get to share my life with just some uh, some truly remarkable people. So it really is a blessing and a gift. You know, and interesting that you said that, and I'm I love that you said that actually. But also something else that you said that you like to you're blessed to spend your life with some wonderful people, and when you're doing amazing things and you're doing wonderful things in the world, you just tend to have wonderful people around you. So it's a blessing to have you in the world and and the message that you're sharing, and I dig your style. I dig the way that you're doing it, man. So I want to thank awesome. you right up front for that. Thanks so much, Wally. I appreciate that acknowledgement. Yeah, absolutely. So how would you describe yourself, Gary? Um, Scottish. <laughs> That's simple. <laughs> I can hear well, that. I think, yeah, well, I think, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, if I was to, can I give you like a, it depends on how I would answer that question. So I was going to answer it in terms of like my self-expression. It would be, um, you know, like I'm, I'm compassionate, um, I'm driven, um, and I'm I'm I'm, in, I'm fairly intuitive and I'm unbelievably hardworking. Yeah. Um, so that those would be like traits of mine, I guess. Um, but but I, you know, if I looked at like you know from a slightly different angle, um, you know, I, the one thing that keeps burning away with me is, um, you know, I have this real authentic love for people, and I completely appreciate that people can be the biggest assholes. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I got this real, I got this real, you know, real profound connection with people. I want people to do well. And, um, and I don't mind, I don't mind giving my life to that pursuit. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I can feel that. And, you know, I've been watching your videos since I was first introduced to you. One of my guests mentioned your book, um, on F yourself. And, I just immediately went out and what I do generally is I download the audio, get through the audio. And then if it's a phys type of physical book that I want to get so I can reference it more off, you know, more often and take notes and whatnot, then I'll buy the physical book Yeah, and the physical books on the way. And I absolutely love the book. We're going to get into that, but I'm, I watched some of your videos. I saw some of the other stuff that you're doing. Some of you listened to a few of your interviews and you're, you're just out there doing it, man. And you don't care you know, who's, who's getting in your way, you know, and the fact of the matter is, like you said, most people are assholes to themselves and that's, that's what right. we're trying to do here, trying to get people to get out of their own damn way. Yeah. I, I think, you know, look, I, I, I do have a kind of style and it's, it's unapologetic, but not irresponsible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people have say they're unapologetic and they say what's on their mind. I don't recommend that. I don't recommend saying what's on your mind. There's a lot of nonsense in there. Mm -hmm. that you need to be a little <laughs> responsible for mm -hmm. um so but 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 you know anytime i say something there's a really powerful context that drives it all and that is i'm out to be a contribution i'm not out to just take a shot at people or to bring people down for the sake of taking a shot at people or for the sake of bringing people down everything i say 
either publicly in my books, podcasts, videos, whatever I do. Sometimes it's a little shocking, but there's a there's a there's a you know massive intention behind it, and that is that people wake up to how great they really could be. So that's uh, you know that's what drives me. That what falls out of my mouth is designed to empower people, not in any way undermine them. Yeah, yeah, and it's a whole shock and awe type of um, type of approach. And we're going to get more into your book because I have some comments about that specifically about your approach and how it comes off initially. Um, yeah. But ultimately, once you dig into it, it's truly authentic and genuine. So how did it, you know, let's get a little bit more into your background a little bit, because that's one thing that I really didn't find a whole lot about. And I, yeah. I admittedly didn't really search really deeply because I wanted to have this conversation between you and I you know, in person yeah. and reveal it to the guys just like I'm getting it. But let's get a little bit more into your background and see kind of what, what, what how'd you get into this? What, how, where'd this all come from? Yeah. I, uh, I mean, I came to the United States in the early nineties. I was, I used to be a, mus- a musician. I say used to be, I had this conversation with Nikki six, who was the bass player in Molly crew. And I said, yeah, I used to I'm be, aware. I, yeah, I used to be a musician. He said, you still are, mm-hmm. which was, <laughs> I'm like, well, in my bedroom, but yeah. Um, but, uh, but I used to be a musician. I, I toured a bit and I made some video, I had some uh, albums. I made four albums and, but I, you know, I never, I never made any money out of it, but, but it was a brilliant time in my life. Just, bro, I just loved it. It was awesome. And, and when it was over, I just knew it, you know, I was, I think I was 30, almost 33 at the time. And I just said, you know, I think I'm done. And I just walked away from it. And I started to I started a uh, construction company, and it was very small. But but I made uh, you know a really decent living out of it. You know I really lived pretty well off of that. In fact, I made more money out of doing that than I'd ever made in my life up until that point. Mm-hmm. And then I, I I hit my late thirties, and you know I seemed to be dealing with the same kind of stuff as everybody else. But I would have told you I was. I felt as if I was handling it pretty well. I was arrogant enough to think I was doing pretty good with all the problems I had. <laughs> but uh, mm. but my brother-in-law, actually, my my wife's brother called me and said, you know, I did this personal growth workshop thing. I think you should do it. And I, so I, I, I'll never forget my words. I said, um, I'm not doing your stupid course. And uh, he said, I'll pay for it. And I said, when is it? <laughs> so <clears throat> so I did that. And I, I walked into the place with like my arms folded. You know, I think I'd been practicing rolling my eyes all morning on the way to the thing. You know, like, this is going to be terrible, you know. And I had this vision that we'd all be, you know, talking about, you know, our spirit animals. And, you know, we'd be, we'd be. We'd be talking about our aura, and I was just like, "This is going to be a nightmare." And anyway, I, I walk in, and and in the first hour, the whole thing's all about how I'm full of it, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, this is an interesting approach." <laughs> and uh, it was the most revealing thing ever. I actually, for the first time in my life, was able to witness myself, and I'd never been able to witness myself. I was too busy being myself. Mm. I mean, see, people say that, like, with a certain degree of comfort, like, I'm being myself. But the problem is, what if you're an asshole? You know, like, that's, yeah. that's a, you know, that really is, like, an issue. Like, that's what if you're a, yeah, what if I'm being myself? Yeah, but what if that's a jerk? Mm-hmm. Or what if that's self-centered or, surf- or selfish or so independent that you don't let anybody in? Or what if you're so, being yourself has you be distant or manipulative or, like, what if like how you turned out was some kind of subconscious series of choices and decisions and then suddenly there you are in your late thirties wondering how the hell you got here. And so when I when I finished that course, I suddenly had an a doorway to examining myself that I just didn't even know it existed. Like you could see yourself that way. Um so I I, I got into it, you know, I get into the whole, like, not not really, not not like picking fluff out my belly button and getting fascinated with what I find, more like understanding myself and using what I understood to, to impact the quality of my life. 
Um, and then the I actually I actually got uh, I actually got fast tracked into a leadership position and the company that ran those those courses and it, that was probably the most transformative of all because it was it was the most I mean my my whole identity got turned to dust you know it was it was amazing and challenge it was like it was like being in the navy seals or something not like you're running around and doing what those guys do and almost drowning and you know? i don't mean that i mean like in the test of character that mm-hmm. it was it was very very confronting and i and i went on to do that i delivered i was a senior program director for that company i Traveled all over the world. I delivered programs to tens of thousands of people. I, you know, I mean, you name it, from Hong Kong to Thailand to Australia to Europe, uh, South America, all over the United States, Canada, you name it, I went there. And uh, and it was a really challenging time in my life for a number of reasons, but the most challenging for my family was that I was on the road for 30-something weeks of the year. So, so I resigned. <clears throat> and... Um, it was, that was also a pretty confronting thing, you know, because I really liked what I did. But when I resigned, it gave me a real chance to take a breath and get be with my wife and be with my kids. And and it was a time, by the way, I, I really didn't have the finances to be resigning anything at that time in my life. You know, it wasn't like, oh, yeah, I'll just resign and hang out at the house and drink coffee. Um, no, it was like, and then where am I going to get the mortgage payments from, you know? Mm-hmm. Um but, uh, but, you know, I, I managed to make it work for about a year. And and in that year, I was a, it was like I was locked in the cellar, you know. All I did was just read, study, think, write, read, study, think, write, completely committed, Im- immersed in my craft. I mean, just immersed in it. And uh, I came out the other side like Robert Johnson in the Mississippi Delta. Like nobody knew how the hell I got what I got. You know, it was pretty, uh, I guess, shocking. Some people who didn't really know me, but other people who knew me and knew my commitment and knew what I'd been doing for the previous 10 years knew that what I was up to was 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 something that might that could well be important, you know, for for some people, you know, mm-hmm. not for all of humanity or something, but for some people it could be important. Um, and then I started a little, a little coaching business, which I think within a really short period of time, I went from no clients to 30 clients and, uh, and, and then somebody said to me, you should write a book. And my, again, my initial thought was, why the heck would I do that? I don't even know what I'm doing. How would you, how do you write a book? Which was the first question I had to answer, I guess. Um, and then I wrote the book, but I had a big plan for it. I had the, I had the, my plan was I'm going to sell out the gate. I'm going to sell a couple of thousand copies, you know, in the first couple of months. And if you know anything about writing books or the book industry, if you sell 2,000 copies of a book, that's like, that's a big deal, right? Yeah. And I, I mean 2,000 legitimate copies, not you buying them, you know. I mean, like 2,000 people bought it is – I mean, that gets publishers noticing you, you know, when if you sell 2,000 books. Most books, people sell like 50 copies, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but surprisingly, um, it sold 30,000 copies in five months. And uh, I had, I had uh, publishers up at Yin Yang want to pick it up. And I, and I you know... I, I literally Googled who are the best literary agents in the United States, and I found a list of 10. And I emailed the first five, and they all got back to me within an hour. Wow. And they all they all offered me terms to become my agent. And uh, the one that I picked is, you know, was and is an outstanding agent, just amazing lady uh, by the name of Jenny Bent. And... Um, she, you know, before I know it, I've got, I think I had about 20 offers for my book. Um, and I, and I, and I signed a publishing deal with Harper Collins and, um, I, you know, that's the book has since gone on and done pretty remarkable things. Um, it 
continues to sell at ever increasing rates. It sold more this week than it did last week and so on and so forth all the way back. Um, and it's been out with a major publisher now for a little over five months. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm working on my second book right now, which, you know, I want to get out some point next year. And uh, I still have a very small number of personal clients. And uh, I'm very active on social media. And one of the things I'm really committed to, Wally, is that people get access to me and my work for either very little or no money. So that's why I'm very active in social media. I put a lot of quotes and and if people register on my website, you know, you get like free videos and newsletters and all kinds of cool usable stuff, not newsletters like, hey, guess what I'm doing? No, it's like things that I've been thinking through or insights that I've had. I give them away to people because, um, you know, I, I, there's, a, there's a lot of universal truths in what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not coming up with any dimension splitting ideas here, you know, but but I really feel as if what I'm saying and the combination that I'm saying it and then the way that I'm saying it is really starting to stand out in this genre. It's uh, I'm not I'm not a motivational guy like uh, like a fitness coach or something. Although sometimes I might have that tone, but I'm not a I'm not I don't speak in great philosophical abstractions, which tends to get people lost. So I like to feel as if I'm pulling from both places where I speak to people in really basic terms about some pretty complex things that allow them to use them in their everyday lives. That was a long answer, but that's the one you're getting, I'm afraid. No, that was a great answer. And, you know, that's that's why I dig your approach so much. That's why I really gravitated to what you're doing. Um, you know, first off, like the, like I said, the title of the book, first it was recommended to me by some guys that I, you know, really trust. And um, I've been following for some time or we've been collaborating for a while. And then, uh, you know, the title of the book is just in your face. And I really dig that. And then I get into the book and I'm like, you know, yeah, the title of the book is probably the most in your face part of the whole book That's because right. you would think with a title like that unfuck yourself i mean this mm -hmm. has just got to be you know f word f bombs all over the place but it wasn't it was really right. in your face still a very straightforward simple conversation that i like to have and it was 100 percent. i just totally got it so to give the guys some context gary uh, what was that original program that you was a part of that you that really kind of pulled you into the whole industry and so the whole thought process of really Seriously, taking a look at yourself and realizing, yeah. you know, kind of dissolving, like you said, yeah. turning yourself to dust. It was one of a lot. Of, I mean, there's a lot of personal growth programs that are a lot that have a very similar nature. But the one I did was called The Forum. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, it was, you know, it was freaking radical for me, you know. But it was my first exposure to that kind of thing, you know. And I think you got, if you're going to participate in any growth work, you got to do – what speaks to you, right? you know, and I think that's why my brother-in-law like got me into that because I think he kind of knew it would talk to me. Um, you know, I wasn't going to go somewhere and we were going to like, you know, hold hands and be vulnerable. At that time in my life, I, I would have run a mile from that. I'd have been like, get mm. me the heck out of here. There's no way I'm doing this, you know. Um, so it was, and it was very logical. It was very, um, I guess a simple way to say it was very it was a very humanist approach to what it is to be a human being. It was a very humanist approach. There was no mystery. There was no, you know, um, broad and expansive uh, conversation for like metaphysics or something. It was all pretty. Here's what you do. Here's why you do it. Here's the model. And it gave me a. It's it's almost like they they present and and this is the same with the work that I do. And, and I suspect anybody who's worth their salt in this kind of genre, if you like, is you present people with a model, almost like a lens through which they can examine themselves. It's not to come up with some belief system or, you know, create a new religion or like, it's not like that. It's like, here's a lens, here's a way of looking at you. Now, what do you see? Mm-hmm. And that's all I've endeavored to do all the way along is to present people with a very simple lens where if they looked at themselves, they'd be like, oh, my gosh. Now, that area of my life that maybe isn't going the way I wanted it to go, that makes sense to me now. Whereas before I read that, 
that didn't make sense to me. So I would say that's probably the, a big part of what I do is I, I I look at some what I feel are brilliant ideas and philosophy and some of the world's best known philosophers. And I ask myself, you know, questions like, well, if I'm if I'm a single mom in Philadelphia, how does this apply to me and how can I use it? And I, I look for ways to say that to people and introduce some of those concepts to people that they identify with it and that it, that it resonates with them. Because, you know, I, not everybody has this capacity for great abstract thinking. You know, I mean, I, I like to think I'm pretty decent at it, but but you can kind of get lost in it. You can kind of get lost in the, the non-reality of that. You know, I, I like to, as I say, take take a concept or an abstraction or an idea and get it right down in the dirt for people where they're like, oh, yeah, I can use that. So, yeah, and, and that's a big part of what I do, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, anytime in my space where I'm abundance, the men of abundance, and I look up other people that are doing anything around abundance and I find these other groups, either on Facebook or websites and stuff, and they're out there holding energy rocks, and they're, you yeah. know, doing all this other. Cre- and it's just not who I. And it's a challenge that I have being titled "Men of Abundance." Everybody thinks it's going to be 100% religion and faith based, and it's not. And you know, but I'm I'm up for the challenge because I am who I am, and I I like to deliver the information the way I deliver it. But I'm not into the whole. Just like you said, I'm not into the whole, you know, soup. I don't want to say supernatural because it's not that not that the point, but the energy yeah. rocks type of stuff and pulling energy out of trees and it's just not and, my, look, you know and that's okay and you if know that's your thing. Yeah, but it's, it works for me. some people. Though some people swear by it and it works for them. But but the the whole the hole in the whole thing for me all along, Wally was. But what a, how that doesn't resonate with me. What am I supposed to do? Like right. you're these other people are doing these things and again a great. Again, a great amount out of it, and I'm like, but who's who's talking to me here? Like, is there anybody talking to me? And and I knew there were people like me. I knew there were men. And amazingly enough, by the way, the vast majority of I don't know if this is amazingly enough or not. Maybe it was just amazing to me, but the vast majority of the people who follow me are women. Mm. And you would think that it would be mostly guys who would like mm. the way that I talk. But uh, but no, it's really like if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter or on Facebook, yeah, I mean, it's probably a 65, 35 split, mm-hmm. you know, in favor of women. But um, but uh, but, you know, I, I, I just feel as if I'm what I'm doing is here to deliver something for people. You're either going to like it or not. That's really not my intention. I don't. And I, I don't mean this in an arrogant way. I don't care if you don't like what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It's a big world, you know. Yeah. Go find another pocket for yourself. Um, I'm not here to fight for my voice. I'm just here to speak it. I don't need to quantify myself. I don't need to justify myself. I just I got a I got a little cardboard box, and uh, and it's got a few tricks in it, and I pull them out and I share them with people. And that's it. There's nothing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not out to, I'm, I'm actually not out to become part of the whole self-help thing. I'm just not a, not a fan of the whole self-help thing, to be honest with you. I remember George Carlin saying this, you know, <laughs> I'm a bit of a fan of George Carlin. Okay. George Carlin said, there's no such thing as self-help. And I'm, you know, he's such a controversial character. He said, yeah. if you're reading a book, you're not helping yourself. The book's helping you. <laughs> so he's like... <laughs> Like there's no, there is no self help. It's like you're doing seminars or videos. That's not self help. That's like getting contributed to by something outside of you. Yeah. Um, which yeah. Means, so yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of like personal empowerment, personal growth, personal expansion. You know, expanding your awareness, expanding your consciousness, and by that I mean like like the way that you see the world, right? The way that you see life expanding that to allow yourself uh, ever increasing um, success and, and, and empowerment. At some point in your life, Gary, I know there must have been one or two uh, kick in the gut moments. And I like to get into this because I want guys to understand that, you know, and women, because it's almost 50 50 at this point, men and women that listen to the show. Yeah, that, uh, you know, that kick in the gut moment that takes every we all have them. 
at various parts mm-hmm. of our lives as teenagers, as young adults, and you're going to continue having them. It's what you do with those kick in the gut moments. So I'd like for you to share one of those kick in the gut moments, Gary, and really make us feel that. Yeah, well, I've had many of those, Wally. You know, um, I, th- I think if I look about 10 years ago, um, I had this personal epiphany. And, you know, I, I people live lives, as I like to say, people live lives in the name of. Um, so they, they be and act in ways that are in the name of something. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, can you elaborate right. on that a little bit so we can... Yeah, yeah, sure. So, like, so, you know, me, both men and women identify with this, but, you know, you work your tail off in the name of being happy. Or you, um, you, you know, you, you, you become determined and driven in the name of success, right? And so another way to say it is we live lives of intention. Mm-hmm. So we have an intention behind everything we do. The problem is with that way of living, and it's, by the way, it's, it's one we've just all drifted into as human beings. There was no conscious choice to do that. We just drifted into it. The problem with that way of living is, though, you, you rarely see the vehicle you're using in the name of. Because you're so engrossed in what the context or the intention of what you're doing is. So, for instance, if somebody's disciplining their children in one way or another, it's in the name of their children turning out. It's in the name of that kid, you know, having a great life. But at the same time, there's no real checking in with, hold on, what am I actually doing here, though? I mean, I know what I'm doing this in the name of, but what am I actually doing? What are my current actions? And often for parents, it's some degree of, you know, having your kid learn a lesson through upset or sometimes physical pain, but some sort of emotional upset or pain. And so when when I was, um, uh, this would have been about 11 years ago, and I suddenly had this realization that I worked my tail off. Like I was this highly independent, hardworking machine. And I, but it was, it seemed to me like I was being noble or something. Like I was looking after my wife and, and my one kid at the time. Like, this is what you do. And here's what I totally missed out. I didn't realize how far I drifted out to the side that I'd become this, you know, unloving, harsh, um, single-minded, just an asshole. And it was shocking. It was like, what have I done to myself? Like, what happened? You know, when I was 10, I was the most vulnerable loving little kid and yet here I am like almost 40 and I'm hard and I'm hard right I mean I'm like I'm even hard to be friends with people would be friends with me because I was charismatic but it was challenging to be a friend of mine you know I yeah I had a I could slice you up you know and very quickly in a conversation and it was it was horrible. It was like, what have I been doing for twenty something years here? What how the hell did I get here? And I saw the destruction, the, the chain of destruction. It, I saw the the mess that it that I'd made to my own marriage. You know, I'd made a horrible mess. I'd you know, treated this woman like, you know, she was I don't know, like a business partner or something. Mm. And uh and I couldn't I couldn't one of the things that I really struggled with, I couldn't be with the whole notion that this woman loved me. Like I, I started to think, you know, like, well, clearly there's something wrong with her then. Cause to love this, you must be pretty screwed up. Now I'm not saying that to myself consciously, but that's how I was acting. And, uh, yeah, I just become this most, I 
just hard, like I said, hard, unloving, isolated, independent human being. Didn't need anybody. And, uh, you know, I really had to ask myself, like, is this what I'm going to do with the rest of my life? Am I going to be this guy? And it was, uh, it was the most transformative, ugly, snotty, um, you know, like painful experience in my life. Because the first step in a transformation like that is you got to talk to the people in your life and start taking a bit of ownership. You know, like, this is who I've been and I'm sorry. And that was, oh, I, you know, because in some of those situations, you know, I felt as if I was right. And I really realized I, like a lot of human beings, when it came down to it, I'd rather be right than loving. Mm. And that was quite the thing, his stomach, you know, I mean, that was like a punch in the gut. You know, that that I'd rather, that really I'd rather be right than love. And I would have, at the time, if somebody had said that to me, I had to realize that myself. If somebody had said that to me, I would have denied that. I would have said stuff like, well, you don't know what it's like to live with them or you don't know what that person's like. And did but, I, but when I looked at my actions in the cold light of day, take away all the excuses, take away all the justifications, take away all of the background story and deal with your actions, it's never pretty. And it wasn't pretty. It was like, I'm the guy who, if you piss me off, I'm cutting you out. You're out. And, and, and I would give myself the whole story about that to justify getting my head on the pillow at night. And I would never confront the idea that I was an asshole. I would only ever confront the idea that they were. Mm -hmm. And that if they were different, this would be different. But then if I joined the dots, I would see this isn't, that's not real. Actually, it's not straight. I'm not being straight with myself. I am this way with people who I feel as if cross me. And some people might say, well, you know, you got to defend yourself and stand your ground. But the realization was it's not worth it. I, I'm, I don't want to taint myself to that degree. I don't want to become that guy. I don't want to live with, you know, the chemical makeup of my body shaping through my own resentments and anger and and, you know, again, this whole thing of cutting people out of my life, I had to, for me, it was like a strategy. I like, know oh, you know, they were an asshole. Get them out. What I didn't realize that I later realized was as a human being, I had no capacity for letting things go. I had only had a capacity, like all human beings, for overcoming things. I didn't realize how those little items in my life, they didn't disappear. No, they, I, I embraced them and consumed them, that hurt, that anger, that pain, that frustration, that resentment. Oh, no, I retained that. And every now and again, when I either encountered that person or that person came across my consciousness or I got any a conversation with somebody about that other person, all that resentment, all that hurt and that anger would come gushing up again, even though they weren't even there, it would all be there. And the whole notion of being able to release myself from that and start to live my life in alignment with some greater sense of self was a, a massive challenge and one that I was willing to take on. So what was that? So two things, actually. What was the, how did you do that? How did you make that change in yourself? Because you were realizing in this about yourself, but that's not the, you know, some people just can't snap and say, okay, I'm done with that. Now I'm going to be this guy. And yeah. then follow on. What did that do for your relationship with your wife, your kids, and everybody else in your life? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, the reality was that when I had this realization, I was already separated. So I'd already stabbed my marriage in the mm. eyeball. I was done. And I was done not because I was done. I was, because, I was done because I was done with her. And... You know, I, I went out with my wife. We went we went on a family day out. You know, just for the little one, because we, you know, one little one, and uh, you know, I, I just looked her right in the eye and I just said, "I'm sorry," and she was like, "For what?" 
And then I just all came gushing out, like, who I've been with you. And it's it's impossible to love me. And, you know, she was, she cried, I cried. And I told her I loved her and I, that I wanted to have her love in my life. And um, that, I, that I was coming home. And at that point, by the way, we had been separated for a year. Mm. And I, I went back to my wife and, you know, we, that was in the mid 2000s. And, uh, you know, we've had two more boys since then. My oldest is now 12. My youngest is three, you know, but, but it was like, it was, uh, it was this massive awakening to myself. Like I said, that whole idea of in the name of like living in the name of, if you start, if any of your listeners are listening to this right now and and key into yourself and how you have justified you. And right there, you'll see the carnage of your life, how you've pointed to something outside of you to explain why your life is the way it is. And I don't care how sophisticated your thinking gets. I don't care how freaking smart you think you are. Your life begins and ends with you. And you got to sort you out. And if you're if you're if you're more interested in how to manipulate conversations between you and another, such to have it turn out, there's no inauthenticity. Uh, sorry, there's no authenticity. There's no real you. That's all just bullshit moves to have life go your way. The key to living a great life, and and by the way, it's not like you arrive at that. It's like this is what you bring to your life every day that you're challenged because you're challenged every day. But when you're challenged, is to be authentic, is to just get your cards on the table and to take responsibility for where everything's at. Now, people might be like, well, why should I? You know, why should I take responsibility? My answer to that's always the same. Because you can. Mm. You can take responsibility. And if you, responsibility is a choice, as is it's not my fault. That's also a choice. And I know people are get like they get upset at the idea of that. I got it. But if you'd thought enough about it, you'd realize you ended up with that point of view. You could end up with a different one like, I'm going to be responsible for it. Now, why would I be responsible for it? Because when I'm responsible for it, I've now got it housed in a place where I can do something about it. But when you're responsible for my upsets, I have no power. You're in charge. Mm -hmm. And I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to give my power away. Not in a, not in a kind of self-centered or selfish way. I just mean like I'm unwilling to compromise who I am and, and give away my sense of myself to how somebody else is. People are going to be the way they are. It's up to me to generate me, to bring me to the table. And, and I, like I said, it's not like I'm walking around floating on air here. It really is like I'm challenged like every other human being is. I just got the bet between my teeth. I'm unwilling to live my life any other way than that I am 100% responsible for it, where it's going, how it's going, you know. And look, since I took that turn, and it was a turn, it was a very significant turn. Since I took that turn, my life has unfolded in the most magical ways. Man, yeah, I can 100% relate. Gary, we're at the point of our conversation where we're going to pay it forward to our abundant leaders. You ready to do that, brother? Yeah. Outstanding. So share with our abundant leaders one to three actionable steps that they can take today. I said, the first thing that springs to mind with me with this is do one thing today, not because you feel like it, but because you know you should do it. Mm. That's a muscle that if you build that muscle, you'll be unstoppable. Yeah. Because then then you'll be able to declare things that you're going to do all the while knowing that you, you're not a circumstantial being, that regardless of the circumstances, you'll deliver. Right? I mean, it, you know, if you look at, I think sometimes the armed forces is a great place to look for that one. But there's men and women put themselves in situations in the, in the armed forces where they don't know how they're going to get it done and they get it done. And, and they get it done strictly because they said they would not because the planets have aligned. So one would be like, pick something today that you know you should be doing 
you don't feel like doing, but do it anyway. As a demonstration of yourself that you can operate in that paradigm. Um, another thing I would say to people is, and again, today, make a big promise. Make a big one. Like I'm going to write a book by the 17th of July. And you'll notice I'm being very specific about it. Mm-hmm. And make the big promise without knowing your plan yet, without knowing your strategy. Get yourself at risk is another way to say it. Get yourself at risk. You'll never cause any significant breakthrough in your life without risk. And that is part of the problem of being a human being. We live in the crosshairs of risk and safety. Like We want it to be safe, but we want the results of risk. And... If you're going to produce any results that are the kind of things that change your life, yeah, risk is going to have to be a part of that. And then the last thing I would say to every one of your listeners today is pick a relationship in your life that's not going how you think it should and get any communication with that person today and tell them either you're sorry or you forgive them or you love them. And get them off the hook for how this is going. It'll be a great relief to you and to them. And you can start to count yourself as a human being that has generosity and that you and you're speaking and what you say, you can actually make a difference in the life of other the lives of other people. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. What daily habits make the biggest impact in your life? Um I've got one, right? There's there's a chapter in my book, um, because the book's got what I call assertions in it, not an affirmation, nothing like that. An assertion is where you make a case for something, and you make a case for something in a moment of time. And it's not any moment of time, it's invariably this moment of time. And where that's most useful is when you're in one of those moments of time when you at least feel like doing something. And one of the assertions that I make is that uh, I am willing. Now, will, that's not just a statement, I am willing. Willingness is a state. It's a, you experience willingness. It's a physiological, neurological experience of yourself when you're willing. The great thing about willingness is it's kind of available on demand. It's kind of like those six bucks movies on your cable show. You're, uh, you, you can... You can conjure up willingness where there is apparently none. And so every day I go into my office and it's always most prevalent for me when I'm writing because I don't I'm not I'm not a natural writer. Some people sit there and they just gush it. You know, I don't I toil, you know, I'm like I I just I'm just sitting there like wrestling with every word, you know, because it's got it. Every word that I that is in my books, it's it's every word of its meant. There's no errors. So every word is intentional. Every word, if you examine that word and you go a little deeper in, you'll see there's a whole world there, not just a word. So I, I every day I when I face that laptop, I ask myself, "Am I willing?" And it just gives me that little something I just needed to get my fingers onto the keyboard and start typing and uh, and I do that religiously I type every day whether I feel like it or not and most days I don't feel like it and some days I'm absolutely hating it like I can't do it <laughs> um, but yet I do it and, and I would say to any of your listeners if there's anything you want to build with yourself anything you want to grow in it would be the ability to take action when you least feel like taking it and that would solve all your problems in terms of your finances, your weight, your fitness, your career, your writing a book, starting a business, asking someone out. It would handle all of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So other than Unfuck Yourself, which we're definitely going to have linked up in the show notes and I highly recommend, what would you recommend that our abundant leaders read today and why? Um, There's a book for me that, I, you know, I'm, believe it or not, I'm, I don't read a lot of, I tend to read like textbooks or <laughs> philosophy as opposed to uh, 
works, right? And one of the reasons I don't is because I, I really don't want to taint the way I think, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm like every other human being. I can have an idea in my head for long enough. I'll literally think that it's mine, right? And it's not. It's somebody else's. So I, I tend to steer clear of them. But one book that I have read and I've read many, many, many times, and I'll probably read it many, many, many more times in my life, is uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, mm-hmm. which was uh, – you know, such a compelling book and really, really was a big part of my transformation. It really was a big part of my realizing that there was a well of potential that I had that I'd never tapped into and that 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 I could. So that's a book I, I recommend heartily Excellent. to people. Excellent. Yeah, I've heard of that book before. I haven't personally read it yet, but yeah. that's another one going on my list. Good. So, Gary, what do you feel holds most people back from living a life of true abundance? Um, when I, when I, uh, uh, people often say these terms, things like um, self-limiting beliefs. And they talk about self-limiting beliefs like they know what they are. The problem with self-limiting beliefs is you don't think you have them. Now, you might say, no, no, I do. And then I would say, well, what are they? And if you can tell me a self-limiting belief you have, that's no longer a self-limiting belief, therefore not a self-limiting belief. (laughs) Right? It's no longer a self-limiting belief. Why? Because you no longer believe it. (laughs) If you're like, oh, yeah, I believe this, then it's a self-limiting belief. No, it's, it kind of works in the opposite way. The way. What I like to say to people is, you are a self-limiting belief. Your every thought is a limit. Your every action is a limit. If you say to somebody, all right, paint me a picture of your dream life, there's your limit. Mm. So paint me a picture of your dream relationship. There's the limit. Paint me a picture of your dream finances. There's your limit. Your your body, your whatever. You you are a series of limits. You, for your listeners, you have, you currently have the job that you thought you could get. That's your self-limiting beliefs in action. So the one thing that I like to say to people is you got to get you got to start getting way more interested in what you think you can't do than what you think you can. Because what you think you can do is at least 20 percent less than what you can. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So so it's about interrupting some of those already existing patterns of thought and emotion and starting to starting to dare yourself to reach a little further out man that's got to be one of the deepest answers i've heard yet and i absolutely love it and 100 percent agree with it so gary what does living a life of abundance mean to you i, I you know the, the way i look at life these days is very different than the way i looked at it about 10 years ago so i, I see life now as a grand experiment and it's an opportunity for me to express myself in ways today that I didn't yesterday. So for me, it's not my bank balance. It's not my home or it's none of that. It's like it's that I get to I get this opportunity to be alive and to use this human beingness to ever and expanding elements of expression. So. It's wild. It's kind of you know I I kind of you know I want to I want to say and do things today that yesterday I might have been tempted not to. I want to tell people that I love them, um, or I want to I want to be vulnerable in places where I tend not to be. I want to be uh, courageous in places where I tend not to be. I want to be joyful and happy in places where I tend not to be. And continue to experiment with this bag of skin and bones. Mm, Love it. 
So, brother, we're going to have GaryJohnBishop.com linked up in the show notes. And uh, if there's any other way that you want us, our guys to get in contact with you, men and women, to get in contact with you or find yeah. out more about what you're doing, please share that. But what did we not talk about today that you want to ensure that our abundant leaders get out of our conversation? Well, I mean, to answer that last one is, uh, you know, is for people, you got to bear in mind, you're, you're a walking, talking fucking miracle. And you've boiled that down to the most ordinary bullshit. And you're living a someday kind of life. Like one of these days it's going to turn out. And the thing you got to confront is it already has turned out. This is it. And if this is if this is it, and for you, you look at this and you're thinking this ain't it, then you need to get your ass into gear and have this be amazing wherever you're at. Because, you know, like that saying, no matter where you go, there you are. That's not a bumper sticker. <laughs> what they're saying there is no matter how great your circumstances get, it'll still be you. You'll still have the same doubts and fears and confusion and lack of confidence. That'll all be there unless you take on some other approach, which is, I mean, I'm not saying I have the answer, but I have something that works for me. And what works for me is I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm out to improve my circumstances for sure, but that's not what my life's about. My life's about enjoying every single minute of what I get to do regardless of what that is, whether I'm digging a hole in the yard to bury my dog, which I did a couple of years ago, I'm going to find some expression of myself in that where I can get to be in awe of sharing my life with that animal and loving him and he loved me and being the grief of that and being present to all of that. Um, All the way from that to rolling around the carpet with my kid or you know, I'm in my 50s now and I'm still playing soccer, but I'll play, you know, playing soccer or finding the joy in those things as much as getting interviewed by CBS News, you know, I, whatever it is, I want to find joy in all of it. I want to find some expression of myself in all of that. Love it, man. And I'll tell you right now, I had a lot of joy in having this conversation with you. Uh, absolutely just phenomenal conversation. I dig it, man. And men of abundance, all of you out there, men and women, listen, uh, Gary said it earlier, you got to connect with the people and the person that resonates with you. And if you feel you need somebody, need a coach, need somebody to talk to, need somebody to follow and to get you, you know, just that little nudge to help you get on track, find somebody you resonate with. And if Gary's the dude, freaking great. Absolutely love it. And, Uh, I dig what you got going on, Gary. I thank you for what you do for so many people. I know you've touched a lot of people. I've read a lot of comments about people who have been following you and getting stuff, getting something out of what you're sharing of your life and of what you've learned. And it's not always easy, but it's, it's just what we do, man. And I dig it. I, you know, I thank you for it. Awesome. Thanks so much. I really appreciate that boy. My pleasure, man. Now go out and live your life of abundance, brother, and keep paying it forward. Aloha. I will do. Awesome. Thanks, Wally. All right, guys. I got so much out of that conversation, man. I really did. It was a super fun conversation, just like I knew it would be. And I it just ties right in perfectly with GaryJohnBishop.com. So go check that out. And make sure you become a member, a request at least, to become a member of the Men of Abundance community so that we can continue this conversation over there at our Facebook community. Now, Go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.